Hi Manny, How are we two, doing? Uh, two quick housekeeping things. With John Ford winding those snaps last week, is there something he has to do better? And has Patchen seemingly surpassed uh, DJAX in terms of snaps because of practice performance? Uh, John, John's still learning and becoming more assignment sound. And, and obviously we have a lot of guys ahead of him playing at a super high level. So to get in right now, you know, the bar has a little bit been raised. So, you know, John, John's close. Um, has really made some big improvements from sure from a year ago, but even from spring ball, you know. So he, he's just he's just a young guy that we're just bringing on our program. But I was watching him today go through drill, and I said this guy has he's got quite a future because he's he's everything you'd want from from an interior defensive guy. Um, Scott has um, Scott has probably nudged in front of uh, D Jack at defensive end, um, and same thing there. It's, it's just hard. It's hard to take. Joe and Garvin off the field. Now the thing is, you have, again, every week we have to assess what type of game it is, uh, tempo of play, temperature of the game. Uh, is it a is it a is it a drop back team that's going to drop back and throw the ball 50 times? Or is it really going to gas your guys out? Uh, we go to Virginia. Again, we're 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 not playing as many snaps defensively as we did a year ago. So you're only talking about playing 50, 60 snaps of defense. Um, because there's a point where any defensive player starts to lose their effectiveness. So, um, so the temperature, the amount they're playing, how many times they're having to pass rush and things like that, a lot of times that's going to determine how often we use our bench. So it's not always necessarily an indictment on how well or, or not well a guy is doing. What kind of strides do you think you've made since last game in this, this week or whatever? Well, we, uh, you know, we spent some time in the bye week uh, looking ahead to some of our future opponents. Um, practicing against some of that stuff, so that we'll you know we'll be more ready when that week comes, uh, and then we you know then we sort of uh, put that away you know and, and, and came back and really got fo focused on Boston College. Um, the, the the thing I'll say about our guys is we've got we've got great leadership, we have great chemistry on defense. Our guys love playing with and for one another, uh, so their their spirit's been great all week in practice and in meetings, and 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 they're, and they're very eager to get out and play. You know, sometimes bye weeks come in good times and bad times. I think we'd have rather got out and played last weekend, you know, truth be told. But uh, but that being said, um, physically, mentally we probably needed it, but physically it was probably good to, to, to get away for a little bit and uh, rest our bodies and, and, and get ready for this November. Is this the many biggest, most physical office body position uh, I would not say they are the biggest, most physical, but I would say they're in that league. I mean, we've certainly played against some other large and, and, and physical downhill running offensive lines. Um, I think just from a, the demeanor of this football team and what they want to do, um, and how they want to pound that ball, and the people, the, the personnel they have to pound it, and the sets they get into with, the, with the, the the personnel groups on the field that they get into, I think that'll be unusual compared to what we played against. You mentioned that personnel, AJ Dillon. What can you say about just the, the challenge that he put, he presents? Well, there's three things that make you hard to tackle, right? One is being big, one's being fast, and one's being quick. Okay, a good player should have theoretically have one of those three attributes. If you have more than one of those attributes, then you're a problem. And obviously his size, you know, you can just look at him and tell it's like, you know, it's like tackling a, a middle linebacker. Um, but then he's got the speed to go all the way. He's got very good feet uh, to make guys miss in the hole. So um, I think, you know, that's why all the draft people rate him so highly. And, and, and he's been a problem when he's been in there. You showed him the run that he had last year against Louisville where he goes 75, he shakes a guy. We did. We actually showed him all of his long runs from a year ago uh, just to get a sense because, again, he's not um, – He's, he's the couple of the games we've we've scouted against him. He's not in those breakdowns. So just to get an idea of, of, of who we're going against, and you know our guys are super excited to go against him. That's what you want to do. You want to come to Miami and, and play against great players. Now that you have a seven-game sample size, how pleased are you about what you created with the striker, the way Romeo and Derek Smith have handled it, and how has Zach McLeod taken playing less? Has he had a good attitude about it, man? Yeah, everybody's everybody's handled it really well. And and again, it's not a matter necessarily of less or more because it's all been about the game uh you know there have been some games where it's been more zach more romeo it's been about the personnel just our ability to match up which is what we said in the summertime um the, the the neat thing is that zach has played very well he's played at a very high level he's made a big jump from where he was a year ago romeo finley has become a very dependable guy on our defense and playing very consistently um so just having those guys the neat thing about both those guys are both very high iq guys they, they both really uh study the game love the game uh you know, Coach Packy's done a great job preparing those guys week in and week out. So, yeah, that position has become a, 
a really strong position on our defense. Hey, we didn't get to talk to you about the targeting penalty on Michael Jackson. Just when you guys looked over that play again, what did you see on it? And is there anything Michael could have done to prevent that? We've asked, you know, what you could do differently because if a guy is laid out, is laying out on his way to you, uh, there's nothing to hit. I mean, I don't know what other part of the guy's body a defensive player can hit um, without him getting hit. And, uh, you know, and there's no part of Michael Jackson's body that he could hit the guy with without hitting him. And they say he's a defensive player and you're hitting a defensive player. So again, I'll reiterate that I don't think anybody would argue and I don't think anybody would bat an eye if we said, hey, that's a 15 yard penalty, let's go play. You know, but for a guy to be disqualified for a game, you're seeing it around the country, you're seeing important players uh, that are being disqualified. Is, does it does it favor? It, it, does the same thing happen to players on offense? Are being disqualified? You know, in, in big time games, you know, that, that's a that's a question. I think it's something that just the competition committees and the offseason, the referees are doing as good a job as they can do. They are, they're they're really doing. They, they have a hard job. They have to officiate it by the, the letter of the law. Everyone's everyone benefits from the game being officiated in a safer way. So we're all for that. Uh, but if we can find some ways to help the defensive guys be able to play and understand the predicaments that they get put in, um, I think that would help our guys. Manny, have you and Mark decided if there will be any playing time consequences Friday for Odin Igbo for the mindless thing he did late in the game? We've done. We've handled that here on this field. Uh, we've handled that inside the building. Uh, there's there's a bunch of things that he's had to sort of complete uh, in that way, um, and we and we've talked about it. And we've been able to learn from that, you know, in terms of. of what happens when we when we let our emotions dictate our actions? Uh, so he's like anything though. He's like your, he's like you know, if, if if Coach Talk is say we're gonna you know coach these guys like they're our, our sons, okay? Well, it's fun to coach them when they're doing well, but when they make mistakes, uh, our mistakes are, are very public. You know, we, we put it on national TV for everyone to see. Um, but we'd be the worst parents in the world if we just took the kid out of the house. You know, I mean it's a learning experience, and uh, and the neat thing is our guys rallied around them. Um, did that play lose us a game? There's 100 plays that lost us that Virginia game. Obviously, that was at a critical time, and he feels awful about it. But, uh, but we've, we've, he's done discipline, and we've been able to turn it into a learning experience. And thus, no playing time yeah. effects yeah. on Friday, right? It doesn't carry over. No, he's, he's, paid, yeah. he's paid his penance and is continuing to pay his penance in, in some ways that it's not for public consumption. Can I just ask you, I've been asking about the – it's supposed to go down to the 30s during the game. Does that affect the defense at all? I know both teams have to play in it. but It can either be a run or a pass. Right. Right. Got and, it. and as long as they still only line up with 11 guys, you know, I mean, we, we, we the more we think about that, the more that's going to create a problem for us. And they'll believe that that's a mental advantage. The guys that are running around playing, I don't think we'll have a problem. You know, I think the important thing is that everybody there pays a lot of attention to the Red Sox game, you know, <laughs> as they're watching their phone and, and, and really, you know, you know, if it gets a little cold, there's there's all kinds of sports taverns in the Boston area that everybody can go watch the Sox play on Friday night. OK, <laughs> thank you all so much.